This is the TV44 High School Whiz Quiz with your host, Nancy Moeller. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. You're going to see a couple of great games tonight. First off, you're going to see Crestview take on Delphi St. John's, and a little bit later, Botkins will face off against Versailles. We want to introduce you to our players joining us now from Crestview. We have Danny Pollock, Hannah Bullion, Joel German, and Noah Dougherty. And Crestview is coached by Sandy Grooms. Welcome to all of you. All right, turning now to Delphi St. John's. Joining us is Ryan Dickman, Aaron Schnipke, Mackenzie Stos, and Lana Klausing. And Delphi St. John is coached by Michelle Stiffy. Welcome to all of you. All right. Some of you have been here before, others of you are brand new. Our first round, 10 questions were 10 points apiece, and those are all up for grabs. We want, we want you to take a deep breath right now and just relax and enjoy the experience, okay? Make sure you get those buzzers ready though. And when you answer, please speak loudly so that our viewers at home can hear what you say, as well as our judge sitting over there, Mark Dickman. And um, also just uh, make sure that that you speak loudly and clearly, okay? We can't stress that enough. All right, question number one. Is everybody ready? Name the cat with the enormous grin in Alice's adventures. Yes, that would be Delphus. The Cheshire Cat. The Cheshire Cat is the answer. All right, number two. Who wrote the mystery, The Mousetrap? Yes, that would be Crestview. Hemingway. Hemingway is incorrect, so Delphus, you have a chance to answer this one. Yes. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. That is also incorrect. The answer is Agatha Christie. All right, number three. Which 18th century artist painted portraits of George Washington? All right, time is up. The answer here is Gilbert Stewart. All right, number four. In what year did the Boston Tea Party take place? We'll go with Crestview. 1752. 1752 is incorrect. So Delphus, do you want to try? 1774. That is also incorrect. It was so close. 1773. All right, moving on. Number five. Name the individual who was the president of the Continental Congress in 1776. Crestview. Adams. Adams is incorrect. Delphus, you want to try it? George Washington. Also incorrect. The answer here is John Hancock. All right, question six. Give the month and the year of the stock market crash that began the Great Depression. Yes, that would be Crestview. October 1929. You are correct. October of 1929. Name the largest library in the United States. Yes, Crestview. The New York Public Library. That is the incorrect answer. Delphus. The Library of Congress. Library of Congress is the answer there. All right, what river divides the U.S. from Mexico? Yes, Crestview. The Rio Grande. Rio Grande is the answer. And you have two questions remaining in this first round. Identify the ancient Greek mathematician who founded the study of geometry. Yes, Crestview. Archimedes. Archimedes is incorrect. Delphus, you want to try? Hippocrates. Hippocrates is also incorrect. Euclid is the man. All right, question number 10 in our first round. Give the A word that is a highly sensitive reaction of the body to certain substances. Yes, Crestview. Allergic. 
Yes, we will take that. And we've come to the end of round one now between Crestview and Delphi St. John. Our score right now, Delphi St. John's with 20 points, Crestview with 30. It's a tight one. We will move into rounds two and three right after the break. Don't go away. <laughs> Tonight's Wiz Quiz contests are brought to you by The Union Bank Company, committed to you. By the Tom All family of dealerships, Chrysler, Buick, Dodge, and Hyundai, the home of a knock-your-socks-off deal. And by QP Hamburgers, a taste of Lima since 1928. All right, welcome back everyone. We are moving into rounds two and three in our game between Crestview and Delphus St. John's. Right now the score is Delphus with 20 points, Crestview with 30. That means Crestview, you're going to lead this round with five questions with five points apiece. They are all yours, but please still buzz in when you answer, okay? Here we go, give the C word for the treatment of disease with chemicals. Yes. Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is the answer. What instrument records electrical activity in the heart? All right, time is up. The answer is electrocardiograph. Number three, identify the area in Paris on the south bank of the Seine River, the center of artistic life. Time's up. The answer is left bank. Name the disorder that is the compulsion to steal. Yes. Uh, kleptomacy. Kleptomaniac. <laughs> that would be it. Kleptomania. Yeah. All right. Question number five. Give the word for writing without meter or rhyme or ordinary writing. Yes. Free verse. Free verse is incorrect. Prose is the answer oh, we're looking prose. for. All <laughs> right, turning now to Delphus for your five questions. Again, please buzz in. Identify the year span of the Russian Revolution. All right, the answer is 1917 to 1918. All right, name the encampments of the poor and homeless named after a U.S. president. Yes. Hoovervilles. Hoovervilles is the answer. What was General MacArthur's promise to the Philippines in 1942? Yes. That he'll return? You've got to be specific. Um, I <laughs> That he will come back again. <laughs> <laughs> and you were close, but not. Um, it is, I shall return. Okay. All right, two questions remaining in this round. The lower house of the Parliament of Britain is called what? All right, time is up. The House of Commons is the answer there. And your final question in round two. Give the Russian word meaning openness. <laughs> All right, the answer here is glasnost. Okay, we have come to the end of round two now between Delphus and Crestview. Here's our score. Delphus St. John's, you have 25 points. Crestview, you have 40. It's still a tight game. Our final round here, 10 questions worth 10 points apiece. They are all up for grabs, so get those buzzers ready, and here we go. Name the 19th century painting by Archibald Willard depicting three soldiers of the American Revolution. Yes, Crestview. The Revolutionists. 
That is incorrect. So Delphi St. John's, you have a chance to answer. All right, the answer is the spirit of 76. Question two, who plotted to betray the American fort at West Point to the British in the Revolution? Yes, Crestview. Major John Andre. That is an incorrect answer. So Delphus, you've got a chance here. Yes, Benedict Arnold. That is correct, Benedict Arnold. All right, number three, what does the acronym UNESCO stand for? All right, time is up. The answer, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Question number four, what Z word is the belief that Jews should have their own nation? Yes, that would be Delphus. Zionism? Zionism is correct. Name the abnormal fear of being closed or shut in. Crestview. Claustrophobia. Claustrophobia is the answer. The abbreviation COD stands for what business term? Time is up. The answer is cash on delivery. All right, four questions remaining in your game. Who was the 19th century British physicist founder of thermodynamics? Yes, that would be Crestview. Hook. Hook is incorrect. Alpha St. John, you want to try it? Yes, Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton is also incorrect. The answer here is Lord Kelvin. All right, in meteorology, what is a type of cyclone occurring in the Pacific Ocean? Yes, Crestview. A hurricane? Hurricane is incorrect. Delphus, do you want to try it? Yes. A tropical storm? That is also incorrect. The, the answer here is typhoon. All right, two questions remaining in the game. Name an open square found in a city or town in Italy. Crestview. Piazza. Piazza is the answer. And your final question, give the P word, meaning the first public performance of a play. Yes, that would be Delphus. What is a premiere? Premiere is the answer. All right, we've come to the end of our game between Delphus, St. John, and Crestview. Here is our score, and it was a tight one. Delphus, St. John, you had 55 points. Crestview, 60. So congratulations, Crestview. You will be moving on in competition. Delphus, great game. Thank you for playing with us. and. Uh, we are going to be back with another game between Botkins and Versailles right after this break. Don't go away. Tonight's Wiz Quiz contests are brought to you by the Union Bank Company, committed to you. By the Tom All family of dealerships, Chrysler, Buick, Dodge, and Hyundai, the home of a knock-your-socks-off deal. And by QB Hamburgers, the taste of Lima since 1928. All right, welcome back, everyone. We are still exhaling after that last game. It was a close one. We had Crestview take on Delphus St. John, and here is the score there, Delphus. Came up with 55 points. Crestview, the winner, though, with 60 points. So Crestview will take on the winner of this game you're going to see now between Botkins and Versailles. We're going to introduce you to the players joining us now from Botkins. We have with us Olivia Ury, Drew Ury, Jared Gobo, and Amber Beeler. And Botkins is coached by Connie Schneider. Welcome to all of you. 
All right, turning now to Versailles. Joining us is Michael Hemmelgarn, Amy Warden, Louis Kramer, and Quincy Baltus. And Versailles is coached by Margie Trion. Welcome to all of you. All right, 10 questions were 10 points apiece. They're all up for grabs. Speak loudly and clearly and make your answers as complete as possible. We have our judge sitting over there, Mark Dickman, who will take any of our questions if we need to go to him, okay? So let's go with question number one. Gorbachev's Soviet economic restructuring plan was named what? Yes, that would be Botkins. The SER? That is incorrect. So Versailles, you've got a chance to answer that one. Yes. I believe it is Glaskos. That is also incorrect. The answer here is Perestroika. All right, number two. Name the battle in Belgium in 1815 in which the British defeated, yes, that would be Versailles. The battle of Waterloo. Battle of Waterloo is the answer. What political activist wrote the feminine mystique? Botkins. Gloria Steinem. That is incorrect. Versailles, you want to try it? Yes. Emil Dickinson. That is also incorrect. The answer here is Betty Friedan. All right, number four. Identify the famous quote that was Theodore Roosevelt's approach to foreign policy. Yes, Botkins. The only thing we hit, wait, um, speak softly and carry a big stick. That's what we're looking for. All right, very good. Question five. What political birds symbolize trying to resolve international conflicts? Yes, that would be Versailles. Doves. Doves is the answer. Question number six. What C word means extraordinary power and appeal of personality? Yes. Charisma? Charisma is correct. Name the systematic study of current human society. Yes, Botkins. Sociology? Sociology is the answer. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It's the first line of what novel? Yes, Botkins. A Tale of Two Cities? You got it, A Tale of Two Cities. Two questions remain in this round. In the Bible, Moses and the Hebrews escaped from what country? Yes. Egypt. Egypt is the answer. And our final question in round one. What day in 1945 was VJ Day? Yes, Botkins. August 8th. August 8th is incorrect, so we can turn it over to Versailles. Yes. September 2nd. Of what year again? 1945. That is correct. September 2nd of 1945. Very good. All right. So we have a score right now of Botkins with 50 points, Versailles with 30. And we are moving on now to our second round. Five questions apiece. And that would mean, Botkins, you will have the first five here. Which 20th century Kennedy served as U.S. Attorney General? Yes. Robert. Robert Kennedy. Kennedy. That is correct. Question number two. Name the period after the Civil War where Confederate states were brought back into the Union. Yes. Reconstruction. Reconstruction is the answer. Question number three, identify the U.S. agency created by president that sends volunteers to developing nations. Yes. The Peace Corps. Peace Corps is the answer. And who were the American comedian brothers that flourished in 1930 films? Yes. The Marx Brothers. The Marx Brothers is the answer. And you have one more question in this round. Considered the finest violins ever made, name those made in 17th, yep. Stradivarius? Stradivarius is the answer. All right, good job. Let's turn it over now to Versailles. Five questions, they're all yours, but please still buzz in. Give the T word that is associated with an emotional shock. Yes. Trauma? Trauma is the answer. 
Name the fats that are found in oils such as corn, sunflower, and soybean oil. Yes? Lipids? Lipids is incorrect. Unsaturated fats is the answer here. In computer terms, one million bytes is equal to what? Megabyte. Say it. Yes? A megabyte? A megabyte is the answer. And you have two questions remaining. In a labor dispute, what is called to withhold work from current employees? What is it called to withhold Strike. work from current employees? Yes? Strike. Strike is incorrect. Lockout is what we're looking for. And your final question, who wrote the 1920s book Etiquette? A book on etiquette and manners. Okay, the answer here is Emily Post. Okay, we've come to the end of rounds one and two, and here's our score right now. Versailles, you have 40 points. Botkins with 75. So we'll be back to wrap up this game right after the break. Tonight's Wiz Quiz contests are brought to you by the Union Bank Company, committed to you. By the Tom All family of dealerships, Chrysler, Buick, Dodge, and Hyundai, the home of the Knock Your Socks Off deal. And by QB Hamburgers, the taste of Lima since 1928. All right, welcome back everyone. We are entering round three of our competition between Versailles and Bodkins. Our score right now, Versailles with 40 points, Bodkins with 75. Our final round, 10 questions were 10 points apiece. Let's get the buzzers ready. And here we go. Over 1,500 people drowned in 1912 on the sinking, yes, for sales. Titanic. Titanic is the answer. How many students were killed at Kent State? Yes, for sales. Four students. Four is the answer. In order to intimidate, what object did the KKK burn? Yes, that would be Botkins. Crosses. Can you expound on that answer? Crucifixes. No. All right, we're going to turn it over to Versailles. Would you like me to complete the question? Yes. In order to intimidate, what object did the KKK burn as a threat outside a victim's home? Yes. A wooden cross? A wooden cross is the answer we're looking for. Name the British satirical character that is the parallel of Uncle Sam. The answer is John Bull. All right, number five, give the I term for one who currently holds a public office. The answer here is incumbent. All right, question six. What is the arm of the Indian Ocean between Arabia and Iran? Yes. The Red Sea. I can, I'm sorry? The Red Sea. The Red Sea is incorrect for sales. Yes. The Persian Gulf. Persian Gulf is the answer there. All right, question number seven. Identify the British economist of the early 19th century who was concerned with overpopulation. Time is up. The answer is Thomas Malthus. All right, three questions remain in your game, and it is a close game. Right now, Bodkins, you have 75. Versailles, you have 80. Give the M word for joining two or more corporations. Yes, that would be Versailles. Merge. Expound on that. Merger. Merger is the answer we're looking for. All right, in Shakespeare's Othello, who was the treacherous villain? Yes, Bodkins. Iago. Iago is the answer. And your final question in your game. Who wrote the novel Brave New World? Say it, say it, say it. 
Yes, that would be Versailles. Charles Dickens. That is incorrect. Botkins, you have a chance to try it. Yes. Stephen Crane. That is also incorrect. The answer here is Aldous Huxley. All right, we have come to the end of a really tight game between Versailles and Botkins, and here is our score. Botkins, 85 points. Versailles, 90. Another game with five points between them. All right, congratulations, Versailles. You'll be moving on in competition. Botkins, thanks for joining us this year, and we want to thank you, of course, at home for watching us. We'll see you back here next week. Bye-bye, everyone.